It's about to be bussin' bussin' on God, for real. Woo! Boys, doing some civic things today. Got the turbo off. We're finishing up the last little bit of fab before we hopefully make some serious horsepower. We're also taking the silencer off. Ooh, that looks so scary. Austin's in the middle of taking the silencer off of the turbine housing so we can make all the noises. I have this addiction to going faster and faster. That I've changed so many things on the Civic in the past two, three months. And I think we're finally to a point to where if I don't make an obnoxious amount of horsepower from this setup, then I'll probably just be six swap it. We've got a new ram horn whatever manifold tile 38 i went ahead and did the real deal there tile 38 mil wastegate we've got the uh whole set turbo that came off of a cummins uh we've got a fully built engine i mean it's the only thing that it doesn't have is sleeves everything and i guess i suppose the only thing else i could do is do coil on plug but i don't really see it. i don't really see a need to do that on a d-series because this coil inside of the distributor is good till 500. so here we go and just pops out. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That actually makes it quiet. Yeah, it makes it a little quieter. Oh, damn! I see you. Oh, that's gonna sound good, brother. It's like it was meant to be. Now done. Look at them welds, dude. Austin is is a champ. Some header paint, and it matches up perfectly, and it's already dry. Best looking Honda out there, boys. Best looking Honda turbo out there, dude. Oh, buddy. All right, brothers. You know what's gonna happen right now. We're gonna send this boy to the moon. We're gonna meet Jesus or meet 500 horsepower, whatever comes first. It does sound a lot, uh, it does sound a lot throatier. Ethan, the king of backing it up. Uh -huh. uh, it smells so good. It's, it sounds different, dude. It's probably the length of the, the new length of the exhaust and the manifold itself. It just doesn't even sound the same anymore. It sounds pretty dope. Before we continue on with this video, I want to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, and that's eBay Motors. Despite whether you are looking to source a turbo kit, or if you're trying to find that incredibly rare part that probably wouldn't otherwise be possible without eBay, eBay Motors, eBay's got you covered. It should be no surprise to you guys that I am very enthusiastic about eBay being a part of this video because I have uh, survived and thrived off of them for years. All the way from turbo kits for my Civics, all the way to incredible incredibly rare parts for my Evo, Skyline, and Supra. eBay has got it all. A couple things that I've loved about eBay in particular is it's always at the right price. You can absolutely trust eBay. It's a great buyer experience and the availability of all of the things that you <laughs> didn't even know you needed. And I personally have used eBay so much that I can speak to all of those. Recently, I started doing a V160 transmission swap on my Toyota Supra. V160 parts are incredibly hard to find. But because of eBay, I was able to find all of the parts that I needed super, super quickly. I will say eBay's buyer protection is legit. I've had a great experience. If I've ever gotten sent the wrong product, eBay has been super quick to swoop in and make sure that my stuff is taken care of. I've even had an instance where I needed to get my money back and before the seller even was able to get back to me, it was back in my account. Over the years of building so many cars, eBay has been huge for me. The exhaust manifold and valve cover for my Civic and both of my Civics actually. The all-wheel drive transmission that I needed to start my all-wheel drive swap. The super rare parts that I needed for my V160 all were Toyota stamped, brand new in box, even for stuff that's rare for Skylines. You don't know how many times I've overnighted a part <laughs> off of eBay to help me make a video for the next day. If you do me a favor, I actually have a link for you guys in the description. If you guys can click that link for me, just go browse around and check out and see what you might need. I love you guys. You guys have saved a lot of my builds and helped save a lot of pain over the years. Thanks to eBay for sponsoring and let's get back onto the video. So the HX35 and granted guys, dinos are all different. This is a Mustang dino so it's kind of a heartbreaker. <laughs> I've seen uh, I've seen on pump gas HX35s on a D16 that's not this built should do well over 400. 
So I'm really just crossing my fingers here. We were at like 340, I think generously on the old smaller turbo, but this one, I mean, way bigger compressor side. Doing the longer runners on the exhaust manifold can and should help. You know, like I said, if this doesn't get me to where I wanna be, then I'm gonna do something with this car that's gonna be a full send and just never look back at a D16 again. This is my last ditch effort to restore my hope in the D-Series. All good? That's 360 right there, what? What? <laughs> 386. <laughs> oh yeah, oh boy. Was that on, that was on gate? You weren't all the way in it yet. Okay. Let's go. said or tile i mean we just melted a line in the oil feed for the turbo so i'm currently now um researching j swaps <laughs> Injectors are at 97% right there. 97? 97 That's there. after hardwiring the fuel pump? Yeah. And I mean, so I didn't take any duty cycle away. Yeah. So I, I was hoping that when I hardwired the fuel pump, I would then be able to remove some duty cycle from yeah. the injectors, but that does not appear to be Damn. what happened here. So at the 400 wheel, we're basically maxing out the fuel system right Damn now. Damn it, dude. 400 wheel is a Yeah, lot. but it's, that's... It's very hard to do in a D-Series. Anybody that says otherwise is wrong. <laughs> For some reason, I thought that Alexis was in the 400s. Nope. So this is the fastest D-Series you've had on this dyno? This is the highest horsepower D-Series I've had on the dyno right now. Interesting. So over the weekend, I went ahead and grabbed some stuff from my shop. I had bigger injectors lying around. And I was able to get a new fuel pressure regulator. Got a new fuel rail that I hopped, that I also copped off of eBay. And uh, we're ready to go make some more power. We were completely, completely maxed out on those injectors. Now we got 1,500 cc's with a new fpr so we can just yeah we're now we're uh, now we're officially limited by cylinder wall i am so stoked guys uh this, this is gonna be rowdy even at even at 400 right now um this car this car's fast <laughs> We just pulled the plugs and we're getting pretty bad detonation. So we're gonna recheck the timing again and make sure everything is okay. On that last run, um, as we just escalated one pound of boost, we were at 28 pounds and then yeah. we moved to 29. Um, we also have an IAT kind of stacking in here. It's really hot, IATs were 140 right there. We had a little fall off in power and there was a little bit of a sound and then I checked the plugs and the plugs definitely show some detonation. Um, and they're heat range 10 with a protected electrode and our ignition timing is at like seven degrees which is quite low. We are gonna recheck uh, ignition timing sync right now, although I think we kind of exhaustively dealt with that when we were dealing yeah. with the cam gear setting. So we just wanna re-verify ignition timing right now to make sure, because going down lower on timing, it would not be normal. Yeah. The motor is not gonna sustain detonation at 30 pounds for long. So sure. gotta, gotta stop, be smart, and find out what is the source of the issue. Again. 
Now okay. that we cleaned them up, that sounded good to me this time. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, I didn't so much as reduce timing like everywhere, but just smoothed in some transitions and okay. stuff. made a thousand today <laughs> just just shy of a thousand <laughs> right under a thousand I'm happy with the car we were struggling for a minute there we were hearing something feeling seeing on the dyno plot and when you're at that high of a boost level you have to be very very careful yeah um, you don't you're not afforded many mistakes at that power level the higher the boost pressure the higher the tuner pressure <laughs> so I have a, I would say yeah your executive decision to go ahead and check the plugs and yep so that's what a good tuner should it's do. not as easy as just like turn the boost up and boom there's the horsepower um there is a tuner button that they don't tell you about <laughs> it's like one well this is over 100 wheel horsepower yeah and not only was. not only is the power higher but like now that we're revving out higher too so we don't have just a peak that's hit and then the, the run is done right. we have a peak and then and then I worked hard to to yeah, hold nice, that power out nice to where we have a nice island of horsepower for you to live in during yeah. during the runs. We actually ended up making less horsepower on this run because it's it's hot. It's, yeah, it's so, so hot. Yeah, IETs were 140, 150. Yeah. So basically, if we stack runs, we're not going to get a higher number. So like, okay, so on a, uh, let's say like we tuned it in the middle of December and it's 30 degrees out. Like, do you th what power do you think we would probably do another 20 horse, 20, 30 That's horsepower crazy. easily? Okay. This is definitely the highest D series that does not have coil on plug that yeah. I have dealt with. Um, so that's probably to go any higher. Probably gonna. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Plug, and if we could get the boost by gear in the ECU. We're gonna try next, and do that. Yeah, yeah, we have a guy that's local that might be able to like, we can just like swap out or something, but boost by gear, cause I'm gonna, Ethos saying I'll just destroy all the things if I launch <laughs> at 32, 31 yes, PSI. The, the transmission will last so. zero pulls at this, <laughs> at this power level. I'm stoked about this. Can't wait to drive it on the street. Um, I'm gonna take it to the track this week and see what I can lay down. I feel like I, as long as I can grip and I can, you know, I drive my best. I think I can take out a lot of people. Maybe not on an eighth, but I think quarter is, we're, we're pretty, getting pretty close to having a pretty dangerous quarter mile for a, for a little D16. Well, I ended up testing out a little bit of launch control, which worked out actually surprisingly well, considering we don't have boost by gear right now. Um, but I'm, I'm incredibly excited to see how this thing's gonna do. It's very, very fast when it grips up in second and uh, third gear is like dangerous. So <laughs> I'm so incredibly excited and, and thankful that we finally have the Civic that I've been wanting to have, like I mean, I've had, I finally have my fast Civic. Does it have two turbos on it? No, not right now, not yet. I don't know. Maybe we'll bring that back. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe do like a B18 or something, like a B series would be kind of nuts, It'd be kind of nutty, or you know, V6. Considering it was a hundred degrees today, and again, we are on a Dino Jet. Like I will take 430 all day long. That is very fast. In fact, I mean, in fact, this is one of the fastest D-series cars Ethan's ever seen. There's definitely a lot of people out there that like say they make a lot of power on D-series. I don't know about that, especially on like stock block. <laughs> we'll see. Um, guys, I, it's nine o'clock and I just got home, so I probably should eat some food and I got to finish editing this video. I was filming this yesterday, so this video is fresh as hell, straight out the oven. My uh, daily advice for you guys today is uh, simple, but you know, there's a song on TikTok where it's like, everything is content, everything is content. Most of us, uh, we put so much focus and effort into our lives on content, but it never will make us content. You will never be content, no matter how much content you make. You will never be filled up if uh, all you're doing is stressing yourself out to get views and squeezing every ounce of energy and happiness and joy out of yourself just for a little bit of cash. Uh, and believe me, I'm I'm the type of dude that like I I have like I have my mindset on something. I chase money. I want to chase views. If I have a fan meetup, I want to you know I I want. So many people to be there. If I have a if I have a clothing drop, I want it to sell out or I want it to sell a lot. You know, I, I get that, and I have to do this every day too. But there's never a cap, right? Like you're always just gonna want more views. You're always gonna want more of this. Like, so, you know, great. If you're a TikToker, if you're a YouTuber, keep doing it. Absolutely, work very hard, but focus less on uh, making your content and focus more on making yourself content. If there's nothing good and real happening in here, then 
you're not going to make much of yourself. Uh, and it's going to be brutal. You guys have an amazing day. Make sure you guys subscribe and turn those notifications on. It helps me out a ton. Love you guys. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Hey, I got two videos for you guys. It helps me out a ton if you watch them. Just literally click on either of them. I think YouTube chooses them for you. Or maybe, maybe Jesus does. He, he, does, he does it for you. Just for you. Have a great day. Bye.